Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hello and good time of day to you. This is Matt. And this is Rachel. And this is the coolest stuff on the planet. And today's coolest stuff, the Florida Everglades. Yay! So the Everglades is this big watery ecosystem um, that covers a big portion of southern Florida. Yes, very watery. Yes, and people often think of the Everglades as this big swamp. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to discover this. Technically, the Everglades is this big, shallow, slow-moving river. So it's a vast and complex ecosystem full of diverse habitats, plant, and animal life. Originally, the Everglades, now, it was a lot larger than it is currently. Mm -hmm. um, it was around 11,000 square miles was the size of it before, but today only about a fourth of that remains, mostly due to human development and uh, a thing called drainage. What's mm -hmm. drainage? Like canals and just as the wa as water diversion and stuff like that uh -huh, mm -hmm. for other purposes. Cool. Yeah. Starting probably from 1900, um, human development started to negatively impact um, the Everglades. People mm -hmm. were concerned about what the impact would be. Yes. So this this lady, this um, she was an environmentalist. She was a writer. She was a journalist. Her name was Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Mm -hmm. She really brought the Everglades to the kind of the mind of the public, um, like what it was and, and its plight when she wrote this book called The Everglades, River of Grass mm -hmm. in 1947. So that same year, one and a half million acres were decided, uh, it was decided that that was going to become the Everglades National Park. It's the first one to protect an ecosystem rather than uh, just say, uh, hold off this area because this we think the scenery looks really nice and it's a it's a great place to be. Right. They're actually Pretty protecting. And, yeah. yeah. The interesting thing I think about Everglades National Park, it's not as um, sort of I guess visually impressive in some ways as at least at first as like the Grand Canyon or places like that. Um, it's kind of a more it has a more subtle beauty, um, but there's this really great quote I found from President Harry Truman when the park was dedicated in 1947 and he was talking about you know what makes this park beautiful mm -hmm. and so I'm going to read this quote. Let me give you a little starting off point and then you can start. You ready? Okay. <clears throat> so quote, here are no lofty peaks seeking the sky, no mighty glaciers or rushing streams wearing away the uplifted land. Here is land tranquil in its quiet beauty serving not as a source of water, but as the last receiver of it, end quote. So uh, you'll see a lot of plant and wildlife uh, in the Everglades when you're there. There are, there are over 300 species of birds and uh, more than 30 species of mammals. You've got things like the Florida panther, mm -hmm. which is terrifying and beautiful. The manatee. And elusive. Elusive. Hard to spot. Very elusive. The manatee, which is not so elusive and lumbering. Which we love. Yes. So cute. You'll also, you're going to find alligators and crocodiles. I, I hope you knew that because if you're there and you didn't think you're going to see crocodiles and alligators, well, huh, sorry. You're gonna. Yeah. Oh, also, check this out. Rachel, um, you, you told me this earlier and I think this is great. Alligators and crocodiles coexist in the Everglades and it's one of the only places or the only it's place. The only. It is the only place in the world where they coexist. Yeah, that, that really blew my mind because I, I, I just thought there would be somewhere else in the world where they would, but... But apparently because their habitats are so different, South Florida is the only place in the world where they coexist. So um, uh, one animal that uh, that you might see in the Everglades but that you're not supposed to see there is the Burmese python. Um, because apparently what's happened over the last you know, nine or ten years is that pet owners have started to release their their snakes into the Everglades, but it's a problem because it's an invasive species yeah. and it affects all the other animals that are supposed to be in the Everglades. So because of the importance of the Everglades, um, the water is both important to humans, human development, and but also to the ecosystem and the animals in it. So because of this this problem, this clash between these two, these two different needs for the water, um, there have been a lot of efforts to conserve and restore the Everglades. Mm -hmm. There's a joint state and federal project called the Conservation Everglades Restoration Plan, or the CERP. Wow. 1994, I think it was, Florida signed uh, the Everglades Forever Act into law, which which allows for restoration and conservation. Certainly so. sounds like it is a very positive thing. Everglades Forever, man. Everglades Forever! <laughs> so that's all we could possibly say about the Everglades. Um, well, in five minutes, yes. I guess. We could say a lot more, but... Yes. But if you'd like to learn more about it, check out our website, howstuffworks.com. 
aside from the regular articles that you find, I also found this neat blog post um, by Sarah Dowdy, who's one of our staff writers and also a podcaster. Yes. And she wrote an interesting little post on a link between the Everglades and fashion. Check that out. And while you're there looking at the blogs, check out the Coolest Stuff blog, which is done by Amanda mm-hmm. Arnold, which is really great. It's cool stuff. And we will see you later. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes. <laughs>